Hi, welcome to the tenth chapter of class seven geography, chapter ten, life in the deserts. Whenever we think of desert, we think of low rainfall, scanty vegetation, and extreme temperatures. And depending on the temperatures, they can be hot deserts or cold deserts. In this chapter, we will be reading about deserts around the world and how people have adapted to the extreme temperatures of these deserts. The first topic is the Sahara Desert. It is the world's largest desert. The Sahara Desert touches 11 countries. I'll just show it to you on a map. These are Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Sudan, Tunisia, and Western Sahara. This total area of Sahara Desert is more than the total area of India. That's how big it is. Here the deserts not only have sand, they are covered with gravel plains that is stones and rocks. They also have elevated plateaus, which is the upland and that too flat. Now let's read about the climate. The climate of Sahara Desert is scorching hot and parched dry. So lying in the tropical region close to equator and that to a desert, it has to be hot. And then it has a short rainy season. And we also know that in deserts, the rainfall is scanty. And the sky is cloudless and clear. Since it's a hot and dry desert, its atmosphere will not have much of water vapor. And with, the, with no water vapor, you'll not have clouds. You'll have a clear sky. And that's why the moisture evaporates faster than it accumulates. So the temperature during the day can go as high as 50 degrees Celsius almost half at what the water boils. And since it's a desert, it is all covered with sand and rocks. So rocks and sand heats up very fast, which radiates the heat around the atmosphere and making the environment air very hot. But surprisingly, in the night, it is freezing cold with temperature nearing to zero degrees Celsius. Now let's read about the flora and fauna. So the vegetation in the Sahara Desert includes cactus, date, palms and acacia. In the previous chapter, we have seen what acacia looks like, but I'll show it to you again. In some places, there are oases. It's a green island with date palms surrounding them. And some of the animal species that live there are camels, hyenas, jackals, foxes, scorpion, many varieties of snakes and lizards. Now let's read about the people in Sahara Desert. Despite of the fact that Sahara Desert has harsh climate, various group of people live there and do what they are best at. Bedouins and Tuaregs are two of such tribal communities. These groups are nomadic tribes, meaning they move from one place to another in search of food and shelter. Rearing animals such as goats, sheep, camels and horses are main activities and they also rely on these animals for food, clothes, blanket, milk, etc. They wear heavy robes as protection against the dust storms and hot winds. Robes are something that looks like this. You will find population being settled near oases, which have some humidity, water and shelter. And these oases are mostly found near River Nile. People grow date palms and in terms of crops, they grow rice, wheat, barley and beans. Egyptian cotton is famous throughout the world. Algeria, Libya and Egypt have discovered oil, which is of great economic value. And due to this, Sahara Desert is being recognized in the world. Other minerals of importance that are also found are iron, phosphorus, manganese and uranium. Life is changing in Sahara. Skyscraping towers are being built for offices. Super highways and camel is being replaced with trucks. This place is also being flooded with tourists. And when a nation's economy is growing, many people from rural place migrate to cities and secure jobs in factories. So this was all about life in Sahara Desert. Moving on from Sahara Desert, now let's read about Ladakh, the cold desert. Before we start, I want you to watch chapter 2 of class 11. I'll link the video below. In that video, I've covered Ladakh in terms of its location. It would be good if you can gain some extra context. Anyways, moving on. Ladakh is a cold desert lying in the great Himalayas on the eastern side of Jammu and Kashmir. I'll just show it to you on a map. It is blocked by the Karakoram range in the north and the Zanska mountain in the south. Several rivers flow through Ladakh, Indus being the most important among them. The rivers form deep valleys and gorges. Several glaciers are found in Ladakh, for example, the Gangri Glacier. There are many mountain ranges in Ladakh and the heights vary from 3000 to 8000 meter. Due to its high altitude, the climate is extremely cold and dry. Remember in Sahara Desert, it's hot and dry. The air at this altitude is so thin because of lack of oxygen. The heat of the sun can be felt intensely. So now you can see some of the characteristics of a desert. It's just that this one is a cold desert. Again, rainfall is as low as 10 cm every year. People suffer from both sunstroke and frostbite at the same time due to intense climate. Now let's read about the flora and fauna of the cold desert. Due to high aridity, the vegetation is sparse. The meaning of aridity is 
lack of moisture. So if there is no moisture, vegetation is not going to be there. There are scanty patches of grasses and shrubs for animals to graze. So you see vegetation is very scanty in bits and pieces. Groves of willows and poplars are seen in the valleys. These are trees and they look something like this. You must have heard about cricket bats were traditionally made from willow wood. And you also must have heard about bats coming from Kashmir willow. So this is the tree from which the bats are made. During the summers, fruit trees such as apples, apricots and walnuts bloom. So you see this place has high aridity. Again, no moisture. So it is only in summers it will have some warmness. And due to that warmness, fruit trees will grow. So it's easy to remember that apples, apricots and walnuts will grow during the summers. Now several species of birds are also seen in Ladakh. They are robins, red starts, Tibetan snowcock, raven and hoopoo. So some of these are migratory birds, meaning they come from different country during specific part of the year. And the animals of Ladakh are wild goats, wild sheep, yak and special kinds of dogs. So if you see all these animals are thick skin and it's easy to understand that to survive in the cold out there, you need to have a thick skin. Therefore these kind of animals are common. And these animals are reared to provide milk, meat and hides. And they also make cheese and butter out of yak's milk. I don't know how that would taste but it's fascinating to know. And we know what they do with the hair of the sheep and goat. They use it to make woolens. Now let's read about the people of Ladakh. So you will find some resemblance between the people of Ladakh and the people of Tibet and Central Asia. Here the people are either Muslims or Buddhists. And in Ladakh you will get to see a lot of Buddhist monasteries. And Buddhist monasteries are also called as traditional gompas. So some of the famous monasteries are Hemis, Thikse, She and Lama Yuru. So during the summer season, here the people cultivate barley, potatoes, peas, beans and turnip. And again repeating, during summer you will have some warmness and you will find moisture to grow all of these. And during the winter months, the climate is so harsh that people keep themselves engaged in festivities and ceremonies. Here the women are very hardworking. They work not only in house and fields but also manage small businesses and shops. So remember, Leh is the capital of Ladakh. And this place is well connected by both road and air. So if you see, there is no mention of railways. In fact, in the north you'll not see much of railways because of the terrain. You don't have much flat lands to build railway tracks. Hence, it is difficult to set up a railway establishment. The National Highway 1A connects Leh to Kashmir through the Zojila Pass. Again, this place is well flooded by tourism. Tourists come from all over the India and abroad. So they mainly come here to visit the Gompas the monasteries, the glaciers and they also come here to watch the ceremonies and festivals because it's all colorful, vivid and fascinating and foreigners seem to like that. Even this place is undergoing modernization and change and the good thing about the people of Ladakh is that from centuries they are living a life of balance and harmony with nature and despite of having scarcity of resources like water and fuel, the people over here are still managing their lives and doing their work every single day. And that's why you don't even have much of pollution out there. And these people also don't waste and discard things. It's cool, isn't it? And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. This was the last chapter of class 7th. I hope you found this entire series useful. And I will see you in the next series. If you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.